that really consume that content they're just fucking lost in that world the disney adults that go to disneyland with no kids they just love it disneyland they get disney tattoos and yes. shit you know they're like super fans i mean we all become fans yeah. of something there's sports fans raiders fans you know like those fools are die hard no matter what you know yes we are oh you're a raider fan huh? yeah oh shit so kyle well thank you for joining me today i wanted to talk to you bro because like i see that you started your podcast well one that's dope like i wish more people fucking just started doing podcasts creating content just try to be more consistent because like here in the valley for some reason it's hard for people to get started yeah they just don't want to get going sometimes yeah that my youtube channel started back in during covid when working from home so people didn't want to necessarily meet face to face but in my business in my line of work a lot of things are face what kind of business dear so i do finances i'm licensed in many different area of finances and so from mortgage loan officer to investments to insurance things like that but people still want to see you face to face though you know like if you're gonna give somebody money or trust them with your finances you want to see them face to face but some people will be like okay we'll do it through zoom so on and so forth so i really started it back during covid to what 2020 yeah. yeah as a like full-time was it like your own business or do you work for an institution so i work with the institution pfs investments and then uh with we use rocket mortgage for the loan side as well okay it's it's a hustle it's a grind you have to find your own own families take care of your own people and that's the hard part so i would you know have a, a job or you know part-time job while doing it you know when i first started i was working with the mechanic and things like that so as i got my licenses and got some experience so different licenses for different services or yes, or, or yes. how does that work yeah so you need a license so as we were talking about earlier it's more about the licenses that you carry not necessarily the degrees that are hanging on the wall so having a license when it comes to food you know food handlers license yeah uh coming to having a license when it comes to dealing with finances when it comes to insurance that's the main thing that's going to get you paid and that's how people are going to trust you and you're going to prove that you can pass a standard of ethics and morals and regulations that the state of california or the federal government has approved and so when you can say okay we passed this license people all right i'll do business with you but you have to follow through you know the service is that goes a long way do you get to deal with uh, individuals that are, or you manage people's businesses both, both. so i so you start with individuals at first, you know, within, you know, people that you're familiar with, and then you start to branch out, get more confidence. And so I started in 2015 and now for what the last four years, since 2019, I've been focusing on businesses. Cal Savers is basically the California has decided they're going to force every business. If you have more than five employees to have a retirement account offered to your employees. Great for me because now every business who has more than five employees, they need what I do. They need my services. Basically selling fire insurance while the business is on fire. Like, hey, I got you. You know, if yeah, you don't want to sure. be penalized by the state of California, let me help you out. I'll set up a 401k, things like that, whatever you need help in businesses. So it's it's a great win-win situation right now. That's so cool. And like, that's always like the biggest struggle. Like for me, my finances, like it's a mess. What is like the most common things that you see when someone's like struggling with their business or finances in general they don't know where their money's going so then they start to wonder where it goes and wonder where it went and it's just like what happened to everything well you, you got to start paying attention to what you're spending that was the first thing that opened my eyes was budget and like man i'm really spending you know hundreds of dollars every month going out doing certain things i'm like i gotta cut back on that what's more important paying off my debt or going out and watching a movie well paying off my debt so I started to see on paper, when you look at your statements, you see, man, you know, every other Thursday I'm buying this or every other week I'm buying these pair of shoes or every I'm doing this. Then you start to see like, man, that could really be more useful. So mine's more of the finance side. So we work with payroll companies and like ADP paychecks in order to make sure that your 401k, all the retirement accounts or insurance options, they're all available. You have a 401k. Do you know where that money is being invested? Most people don't. So it's like, okay, are you investing in the Home Depot or Lowe's? Well, don't you think you should probably find out that way you know where to shop? Things like that, you know? So we, we sit down and we educate them. Okay, this is in your portfolio. This is where your money's going. And then we say, okay, this is what kind of insurance you have. Do you know that if you pass away or in order for your family to get paid your life insurance through work, you have to pass away a certain way? What like, do you mean pass away a certain way? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we'll sit down with, you know, a husband and wife and we'll say, hey, uh, I see you guys have um, uh, ADD uh, life insurance policy. They say, oh, yeah, it's free or maybe it's like $6 or something like that. Okay, 
Let me, do you mind if I explain how it works? Yeah. Well, it's called accidental death and dismemberment for a reason. You have to die in an accident or be dismembered, lose certain pieces in order for you to get paid out. So they won't pay out something like if you passed away of cancer, uh, like such as my mom passed away. If you, uh, you know, had a uh, different type of illness or disease, they don't cover that stuff. You know, um, act of war, they won't cover it. Wow, so it's, that, that, it's a specific way that you have to pass away. So that's why it's free or kind of just given away. And a lot of people, they don't realize that. They A lot of them didn't want to cover COVID. That's not an accident. That's not an accident. That's yeah, crazy. so people, if they got COVID, nope. Also, some people, if you got sick or if you got an illness, the insurance was tied to you working there. So if you're no longer working at that job, or you're, if you're on a leave of absence, things like that, then they're not going to pay out that insurance. Because you're technically not working? Yeah, because it's not yours. And so we would advise, this is how you get insurance that you own yourself, that's private insurance, you take care of it yourself. That way, no matter what job you leave, your insurance goes with you because it's yours. It's not tied to your job. So then same thing with your, your 401k. You leave your 401k, you need an IRA, individual retirement account. We'll roll it over, do whatever you need to do, bada boom, bada bing, explain where your money's going. Where you want to invest it? Do you want to invest it into aggressive, moderate, very conservative, things like that? So that's what I focus on when it comes to business and the employees within it, because nobody's sitting down when it comes to, hey, who's the last person that explained your 401k to you? A lot of people, they don't have one or nobody's ever explained it to them. They just signed up one time during open enrollment period and they never heard from them again. There's no financial education anymore. And I don't know. You, we can get in conspiracy talk in a minute about is, is that on purpose, but oh, it's for the most part, they don't talk about interest rates. They don't talk. So right now, uh, today I showed on my social explain, media. Can you explain like interest rates? Cause I really don't know like the full. A ver, see, see, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm an ape dog. I'm telling you, <laughs> no, see, I'm barely fucking, I don't, I don't even know how to turn on the cameras. <laughs> Uh, thank you for Brian. No, just, <laughs> no, you but, think Brian's here just to look pretty, right? bro? So like in high school, they should have taught us about interest rates. So interest rates are tied with basically what the federal government, uh, the Federal Reserve, actually, they create the federal funds rate, a rate that they loan with banks, money and banks between banks, um, money between each other. And that rate right now is just over five as of today. Well, then you add on other banks, and by the time it gets to us, it's now over 7% right now. Today, I posted it was 7.22%, was a national average for 30-year uh, fixed mortgage. Basically, what does that mean? That's the interest rate, 7.2%. Last year, it was 5%. A couple years ago, it was around 2%. And that interest is basically the cost it takes for us to borrow money or a front. That's what I explain it to a lot of people. Interest is a front. Like, hey, I want this car. Well, you owe us $30,000 plus you want it today. Yeah. But you're going to give us the $30,000 over the next five years. Yeah. All right. We're going to front it to you today, but you're going to owe us what's called interest. There you go. And how much interest is that percentage? Is it 2%, 5%, 7%? Right now it's around 7% for a mortgage. And then it goes to your car. Car, it might fluctuate. It might be like 12, 14 but if they raise it at the banks, best believe they're going to raise it on your car. You buy jewelry. Same thing. If the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, it's most likely going to affect interest in every area. So it's like a domino effect. For the most part, yes. Yeah, it's it's a systematic risk. It affects the whole system. And why do they mm -hmm. raise and lower interest rates? Like, What's the purpose of like raising and lowering it? Like, I don't understand. Okay. Why can't it just be one thing Great forever? Question. Why? It's just make Great make question. Sense, I feel like but... a professor here. So <laughs> for the most part, um, there's too much money in the system and the people are borrowing too much that they need to take money out of the system. So they printed a lot of money. Uh, I don't want the specifics exactly. Uh, a lot, like 80% of the money used was printed like in the last five years. It's crazy what's in circulation right now. Um, and so all the trillions of dollars that was printed, that has caused, you know, the, we've seen, uh, huevos, you know, eggs going crazy, right? Like freaking $12 for a dozen. Right. Yeah. And then we see, you know, the price of lumber, a lot of the prices went up in the last couple of years, inflation, construction materials, bro. Like, cause I, I do, lumber, right? I work in tile. So everything went up like almost double on every kind of material, yes. Pinsets, cement, sand, 
especially Meadows with all the logistics and shipping mm-hmm. problems we've been having. Like, it's crazy. Everything just, like, way more. And then the gas is more expensive. So, like, as some of the I'm always driving, getting materials. The dump is more expensive mm-hmm. when we have to dump. It's crazy. Yes. So, everything went up. <clears throat> that was the cost of living. Basically, people <clears throat> people had so much money that they raised prices also just going around because people their stimu- people's stimulus checks, some of them were spent on Dogecoin. Like you just had so much extra money just being invested. Hey, to the moon, right? <laughs> so all this money was just just extra too much money in the system. And it you caused that inflation plus supply chains and many other things. But not long story short, inflation was too high, too much money chasing too few goods. And so basically they had to take money out. So are you going to want to buy a house at a 7.2% when you could have got it for 2.5%? just a little while ago most likely not you're gonna wait that's an example of taking money out of the system so instead of you spending that three hundred thousand dollars for a house this summer because interest rates are so high they kept you from spending your money they took money out of the market they're trying to lower the price of everything because for example let's go back you know five years ago if we all uh, we're all living together in a, in a room chilling in a house and we say hey I just went to work and I brought home a hundred dollar bill like five years ago. That might've been like, Oh, that's pretty good work. Days wages. Okay. But nowadays we all come home and we all have hundred dollar bills. And it's like, well, that's not that good. Like we need more than that. Everybody has hundreds. It's like, that, yeah, that's nothing feels anymore. Like a 20 now. Shit. Uh, a million. When we were in high school, I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, a million being a millionaire was like, man, we, we made it bro. Like, yeah. bro, a million now. Get, come on, bro. That's, <laughs> next. What do we got next? So it's just, I don't know, it's just, there's so much money out there, we need to raise interest rates. So they're going to keep raising them to stop people from spending money. Oh, that's so smart. I never understood that. It it's makes a, it's like a check and balance, right? Yeah. That's their job is, and they get mad at each other. Like the Federal Reserve gets mad because they can't create the laws that allow the spending. So the Congress allows all the spend. They pass the laws that say, okay, send checks of stimulus. But the Federal Reserve is over here saying, stop doing all this, because if you keep putting more money in the system, we have to take money out by raising interest rates. And then they get mad. Oh, don't raise interest rates. Blah, 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 blah. Can it just be the interest rates be for forever? Like, it doesn't go up or down? Like, what? OK, so if you're going to front me something, let's say you front me this camera for uh, like a day or two. You're not going to charge me that much. You're probably saying, no, I just use it, homie. Straight up, you know? But if I say, let me use it for 10 years. Shit. So 10 years. Uh, so then we get to a point of, then that's when you might hear of uh, inverted yield curve. This is super nerd talk. But it's basically, you expect on a short-term loan, bonds. When you think of a bond, think of a front. That's what it is, a loan. A bond is a loan, basically a front, right? So if we're going to loan money just for a short time, a one year or three years, I should only pay maybe 1% interest, Okay. But if, or yeah, but if I'm going to loan it and borrow it for 10 years, I have to pay a little bit more. Make sense? Yeah. I'll pay maybe 10% in interest or something like that. And so that's why you need different interest. And then it just affects the whole like system like that. And that's just one example, but there's probably many more. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then in, damn, you're, you're, make, you're learning me today. <laughs> you're educated. learning me today they don't talk about this in school bro they're teaching us like uh you know pi equals 3.14 right like christopher columbus you know sailed the ocean blue in 1972 something like right why do i know that bro like what 1942 18 four nah something close right fuck but he yeah, shouldn't 14, even be on my mind I should, I should be more thinking about okay like what did they 1492 do? you know for there you go 1492 better spent learning utilities and qualities and providing resources that are going to be applicable every day not just oh, i found out this information i could do long division that's cool <laughs> like you know what it, like indivisible numbers those don't pay bills i understand if you want to be an architect which i went to school to be you know you need to learn sign and tangent and certain things but i believe early on we should be educating kids in other things that are more applicable every day exactly such as interest rates your car so i have for instance, young individuals who they don't speak English all the way, and my Spanish is, you know, más o menos. And so, but they have kids, and I'll go to their house and explain their 401k, their IRA, 
and some words are not easily translatable. They're different, you know, uh, when it comes to like the retirement language and stuff like that. But I'll be talking to some of these kids and I'm just like, man, they understand maybe sixth grade. They can understand about interest. They can understand, hey, Winco is charging us three fifty for cereal, mom. Uh, Food for less is three ninety nine. Walmart is this much. Like, and it's just breaking it down. Hey, if we budget this, we could be doing stuff like that. These kids are already doing it, but I'm the one that's teaching them. I love teaching them, and I, that gives me something to do. But it'd be great to see something like that. Those utilities being utilized instead of, I don't know what what, what was I learning? Um, freaking Pythagorean theorem. There you go, Pythagorean theorem. You know. So it's, you know, just maybe a little tweak here and there. And the school system just hasn't evolved in 100 years, you know. It's, it's crazy. That makes no sense. Everything right? changed in school. They're still the same. And now I feel like it's even worse because there's less teachers. So the classrooms are like one teacher, 40, 50 students sometimes. But, like, there's no way they could actually, I mean, and a lot of them do a lot of good hard, hard work. But, right. like, they don't get the attention of not enough assistance, you know. Yep, the hands-on that that they want to give and that's needed. Yes, that's unfortunate part of the system. So, but you're starting to but see they, a lot of people. But move, that's because they private. want it that way, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Keep us, you know, kind of just the the sheep in the fold. Just all right, just, it's all good, you know. See, because that's a form of control. They're, them raising and lowering the interest rate, like they're yeah. literally controlling. Yes. What the, they want the population to the, do. We want these foods to spend less money. The Federal Reserve, which that's is not crazy, these people are not voted by us, and they decide everything. And it was this Federal Reserve is. Oh, it's a, a private institution, right? Yeah, it's by the government, and but you, we don't audit the Federal Reserve. We don't see what they have on the books and what they have in the safe and everything for the money that they say they have. The whole system is. It's built on, trust us, just trust us. And it's getting we worse yeah, because they're taking away. Money. They're trying to take away all the cash, bro. Like the banks and a lot of places don't even take fucking coins anymore like you have to pay like exact change everybody's like using the tab on the phone the little mm -hmm. uh, apple pay or whatever i don't know samsung yeah. users have but you know they want us to be not using physical cash or gold nothing they want us to all be digital because they could just say oh we have this x amount of numbers and like you said if nobody ever audits them and it's just like okay trust us we got this on the books and we'll give you this much and we'll just print more money if we ever need to and we have this much in assets to back it and just trust us what what are we doing no so and a lot of people don't know so the federal reserve was founded in 1913 which was coincidentally less than a year after the titanic sink which a lot of people on board the titanic and people before the titanic sink did not want a federal reserve because you have this banking system that controls interest rates that are not applicable to people in the cornfields and people in the cities. Those people are not going to be loaning and getting a front. They're going to be doing it at different rates and different people and different uh, services, population of a million compared to, you know, 5,000, things like that. And so a lot of people did never wanted a federal reserve system, but next thing happened, boom, it popped up in 1913. And since then they've been raising and lowering these interest rates and basically controlling the money supply. And then in 1933, during a, the Great Depression and economic upheaval, we had to turn in all of our gold and give it to the Federal Reserve in 1930. Like, it's just weird how it's so like. So, what do you mean? It's on, during the Great Recession? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the Great Depression. Depression. Yeah, the Great Depression. It was basically in yeah, 1933. FDR made a letter and say uh, it was public everywhere that you had to turn in your gold to this Federal Reserve. This new company, this new just entity was created established about 10 years before that no about 15 years before that and now you have to give all your gold to them because the government said so yeah and since 19 from 1933 to 1974 you could not own gold so they tried getting rid of gold i was like okay and they just said okay nothing can be exchanged into gold nixon did that in 71 with foreign exchange and basically it was just trust us the dollar is okay but now we got to the point with bricks, nobody trusts the dollar anymore because it's backed up by nothing. You could burn a dollar bill, there's nothing. Gold, you can't burn gold. Yeah. So what's bricks? Bricks, that is the new international alternative to the SWIFT system, the IMF, and the World Bank. 
basically BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and about probably another 20 different countries. They've all come together and they want to create their own financial system that helps everybody. Instead of being tied to the IMF and the World Bank, they control a lot of what countries can and can't do, regulations, things like that. Tariffs, trade, um, all that different type of stuff. So, yeah. They, What's and, the IMF and the World Trade? Uh, International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. And um, in a nutshell, these are these regulations. It's it's just a bunch of politicians, again, once who've been voted and people like, oh, shaking hands behind closed doors, lobbyists. And, okay, when a country needs help and we want something, you're going to do it. When we don't want them to do something, you're not going to give them money. You're going to say, no, you can't do it. And because we're all part of this IMF organization, everybody's going to agree if this country is told no by the International Monetary Fund, don't do business with them. No country can do business with them. Stuff like that. And so it's a lot of like bad stuff and it's not for people's best interest. It's got a lot of bad stuff going on. So a lot of these other countries with BRICS, they said, you know what? We want to have currency that is backed by our own precious metals instead of the dollars backed by nothing. Like before well, the American military and everything now. Just what America stands for. It's basically our assets. The United States Corporation. How much do we have in assets? Yeah. You know, it's a whole nother conspiracy. Of what's an asset with the United States and people and social securities. But when it comes to like, you know, um, actual funds, gold, you know, buildings, things like that. Th and, those, and what's the purpose of, because there is, that's like other kinds of, that's not even, that's just levels of wealth of just power just showing what kind of power they the have. elites from the rothschilds yes the rockefellers yes controlling the banking system since the 1700s and putting people in place and allowing okay this happened okay boom we could take advantage we don't want to let a crisis um what was it go to waste yeah go to waste all right see so exactly oh the titanic oh that's a now we got the federal reserve hey boom it's gonna help oh um the financial crisis and the Great Depression in uh, 1929, well, now we can create the FDIC, which is the regulations, uh, monies insured, things like that with the banks. And it basically insured all these banks. The FDIC has allowed banks to allow them to make reckless decisions and there's no um, cost for How it. does a bank fail? Like, I just don't Not anymore because of the FDIC. No, but like, or just those banks that collapsed and shit. Like, oh, those ones. Yeah, like... So like, those, how does a bank? Because they don't, they don't have the right associations and handshakes. Basically, um, in a nutshell, what happened financially on the surface? They made bad loans, and interest rates started rising. So they were paying, let's say, two percent. They okay. Banks are not in the business of real estate. They do not like real estate. Okay, they did money. Talk to me about numbers. And so what happened is they bought a lot of real estate. Commercial real estate is going to be bad for the economy soon but so they had a lot of real estate and then COVID happened things like that but interest rates were the zerp program zero interest rate program zerp zero interest so all these banks had these things and they were doing loans and they were making these deals at zero percent interest so they're earning zero percent interest well then these banks uh the interest rates started rising two three four five six percent so now these banks are having to pay six seven percent but they're only getting, let's say, a 0% return. Oh, damn. Does that make sense? Because yeah. they locked in these contracts for these, like I said, commercial real estate or these whatever, and they're not getting their investment back because they had too many, I wouldn't say bad loans. They had too many. Yeah, they, they should have known, like, bro, you're not going to keep all these loans at 2% forever. Like, you have to plan ahead. As soon as they raise it, what's called a stress test. Can they survive a stress test in the event that they raise interest rates? Do they have enough money on hand? These banks didn't have enough money. And like I said, when they when I say they don't have enough money, they didn't have the right connections. Like so you, they weren't FDIC insured, right? Yeah, some of them are, some of them weren't. And I believe at the end, they said all of them were going to be taken care of. So when you mean collect... But they're consolidated. The banks had to sell. Like, so there's people that, that have... J, well, JP Morgan Chase, for instance, they got sued. And they, they got sued for $4 million. Oh, no, Someone they, they let got, them borrow the money basically to cover... 
What do you mean? For who? When you say like a, if a bank doesn't have money, when you say he doesn't have no they're friends. insolvent. Yeah. So um, people, oh, I want. So you come in my, you come in. I'm in the bank. You come in today. I want my money. I don't have it. What do you mean? I don't. There's no cash. All right. No, but what I meant was like, you said that a bank fails because they don't have friends that to help out the bank. So like, yes. who's the friend? That so me? hey, Brian, will you? Uh, this guy wants like ten million dollars. Will you loan me ten million? And then I'm a, and then you're gonna be like, yeah, but you're gonna pay me back fifteen million. No, oh, don't do that. All right, fine. And then boom. All right, the homie came through. But now there's ten more of you. I don't either have that association with like J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, some of these big banks. They had those connections. Certain people they could help out, or they could tell people, hey, don't take your money out, or we got this and. They would tell the media certain things. That's where a lot of the media, like, and people would come on and say, oh, don't do this and do this and try and stop people from doing what's called a run on the banks, people taking all their money out. But now, I believe it's more than 60% of all of our money is controlled by 10 banks now. 10 banks in the whole United States? Yeah. Like, obviously, there's more banks, but 10 banks control a majority of our wealth. And that just happened recently. That's why I'm wondering if it was um uh effort that was you know a convergence on purpose so just so there's a meeting and there's like the 10 heads of the 10 banks just they meet up on a fucking table to talk about they just control everybody's like, imagine the power to be in that one of those tables bro that's crazy the elites i don't i don't even know what you would have to have done to be at that table because i don't know some of the nasty stories i hear is like nope you got to do something to deserve that and then what's above that table i i believe that's where you're talking about the the rothschilds family those elites the big mafia so, family so it's like the, the yeah those families and i think um maybe like putin because he's i don't know yeah he's, he's i mean control. he's he's untouchable like those kind of people like yeah probably some people like uh saudi arabians things yeah, like that, that, are, that are they're not that connected yeah they haven't allowed foreign dignitaries or foreign banks to come and establish a foreign type of financial system that can in just Southern take Arabia, they, over they've kept everything away. yeah that's the main thing is having a central bank and that's going back to what we we're talking about the currency a central digital uh, bank for currency the cbdc yeah central digital yeah so basically they want to have things online for digital money because they can control us now yeah which i'll get to in a minute and so if they can control the finances, they can control us every day. They can't control Saudi Arabia's money. They can't control Putin's money. They can't control South America. They can't control Brazil. They can't control China. They can't control India. BRICS. And all of them have precious metals. And that's what they're bringing together with BRICS and saying, hey, we want to be treated equal. Kenya, Congo, Uganda, South America, uh, Egypt. And they say, hey, we want to be treated just like Russia. And we'll use our precious metals and we'll trade that barter system whatever we don't need this whatever banking system that's going to tell us how much you're going to give us or how much we're going to loan you get out of here let's start our own and that's what they're doing so they're leaving the imf and the world bank and going to BRICS. whereas the united states they're talking about going to the um, cbdc with online control of you know, already with the IRS, more than $600 transaction, we're being notified and pay taxes on $600. If I send you $600, but we're going to be paying tax. Like, come on. They want to see everything now. And like you said, going back with like Apple Pay, it's all digital. Zelle, Venmo, all that stuff, digital. Yeah, they just, they want to control every single, because right now there is so much cash in circulation, you know, and they don't have like they don't have it in their banks. They don't have it mm-hmm. in, with them. You know, there's just people that just transact in cash. And like, fuck, that's crazy. So they also manufacture wars and shit like that too. Right? Yeah, wars good for money. Wars are just there's so many companies that benefit that all these things have to be made. You know, missiles, tanks, all the jets, the all the mm-hmm. damn. That's crazy. And they're all lobbyists with each other. They're all close buddy buddies with the bush and lockhead martin lindsey graham um many different both sides of the aisle it's not one-sided um and yeah war is good for business when you look at world war ii our production and our economy gdp after during world war ii shoot up and then when 9 11 happened everything like that everyone came together and just avoided all the bad finances that was like oh they just 
lost $2 trillion unaccounted for the day before 9-11. And then, oh, yeah, 9-11. And then, all right, let's get together and let's build and let's and go then fight an enemy. And files burned, right? So, yeah, all those files. Yeah. So, so what happened A lot there, of files. So and the World Trade Center, number seven, how did that go down due to fire? I don't know. But the passports survived, but not the buildings. It doesn't make any sense. So many things did not make sense. So, but... Yeah, it's just the war that they started with 9-11 in Iraq where there were no weapons of mass destructions. It was just good for business if you knew who to invest in. You knew who you were talking to behind closed doors and what Congress was going to do, what laws were going to be passed, and what's allowed. Yeah. No, and that was like the beginning of everything because it just became worse once like social media got involved. Because now we're giving all our data and information, so not only... the could they control us with the money? They literally could control us with the, what we consume, our behavior. Mm -hmm. Like it's, well, it's going to be it, worse than that. Dude. So what you do is already tied now with a, uh, a, a social credit score. So they do this in certain parts of China. And so what you say or post on social media is tied to, oh, is that hate speech? Oh, we're going to rank you down a little bit. Oh, you cussed and you were some vulgar activity over here. We're going to rank you down a little bit. Oh, you did this. We're going to rank you up a little bit. You think it really gets to the point? Yeah, they've already talked about it. Yes. There's no way. That's a social too, that's score. Crazy. And that will be tied to your travel, tied to where you could spend in certain institutions that you're allowed to based on your score. It's like a new credit score. They already do with credit. So this is so stupid about credit, bro. Oh, my God. You have to prove that you can get in debt, but not too much debt in order to prove that you can get into more debt and they want you to start paying off your debt, but they never want you to pay all of your debt off. That way you can keep getting in more debt because they want you to have a high credit score. Makes no sense. But if you have no debt, you have no credit score. If you pay everything off, your credit score sucks. You need to have debt to have a high credit score. It's so What's the backwards. easiest way to build your credit score? Get a bunch of small things and pay them off like every month, every other month. If you get a small thing of jewelry, $500 necklace or something for a loved one, something significant, credit, boom. And you want to keep your credit maybe around 25% of the utilization. So let's say you get a $1,000 necklace, pay it down to 200 bucks. You want to keep some credit. Like I said, if you pay it down to zero, it's going to look like, oh, he doesn't he pays everything off why because they want to be paid interest they want to be paid the fronts you always they they want you in the system the whole time so you always owe a little bit you're still in the system and it's going to tempt you to buy something give us interest we're only paying the bank 7% but we're making 16% loaning it to you so we're making you know 9% on interest so that's what they want to see is okay so when you go into a car you go into a house is oh he's good at paying long time no finance guy, well, the guys that you're talking to at the dealership, they probably don't care. But the finance people behind the books, they don't want you to walk in and let's say you're buying a truck for 30000 and you say, you know what, I'm going to, can you loan it to me at, you know, 10%? Yeah, sure. We'll put some money down, bada boom, bada bing. They do not want you to pay it off the next month. That they just, well, that's a pointless to them. They just lost so much money. Yeah, they, they want you to be there for five years at least. They and, need to make that extra, you know, twelve thousand dollars off of you over the course of five to seven years. That's what they want. So it's like that with anything. And so they want us to stay in some type of debt where we're still striving for something, but we need it now. A little popcorn generation, make it for me right now. So and I can have it now, but I'm willing to pay and be like a little slave and work for it. Every day I have to go to work to pay for that truck. That's why I think um they say it's better to buy things in credit because you're leveraging somebody else's money instead of yours. So, for example, like yeah. if there was like an extra charge, uh, let's say like, I don't know, some if you were paying with a debit card and you have like, I don't know, uh, some obscure charge, like you got charged like two two dollars or twenty dollars or a hundred dollars. You go to the bank to get that process like you you report that it will take days. Mm -hmm. But if you use a credit card. Oh, well, like, obviously, like, credit bureaus, like, incentivized to, like, do something yeah, about it because it's, it's their money. Yeah, exactly right. It's on them. Some people use the, uh, I don't know, like, thesis, but that it, it's better to use credit instead of debt, debit cards. Yeah, and especially if you pay them off every month, boom. Like I said, if things get stolen, you start to build up rewards with certain credit cards. They give you rewards. Your bank isn't giving you a reward system for the most part. 
So if you have a, a private credit institution, they'll give you 3%, 5% cash back, other things like that. So there's other little perks also with using credit. So like I grew up on Dave Ramsey, who's like hates credit cards and all this stuff. But no, nah, you could be more efficient and be smart with it. There's a wise way to use credit in, in your favor to get what you want now. And then you could use it now to do business. So like, for instance, like equipment, if you could get equipment, loan it now, and then boom, you take care of business, you could pay that front back a lot faster than, you know, a couple of years. You can pay it back in a couple of months because of all this equipment that you just loaned right now. So it could be utilized for the good thing, not necessarily, oh, wait till you have cash to buy everything cash. Like, I don't necessarily agree with that. That's no. Let's do business today. Yeah, you got to get the ball rolling. It's like, what am I going to wait? I yeah. have to wait every, you know, six months so I could afford this thing. You know? Yeah, I'm not like, like I said, I like Dave Ramsey. He'll say, you know, no, you should get like two jobs, do pizza at night, save up the cash. And then when you get enough cash, then go buy this camera. Dude, I could have been doing camera for the last like two months, had some work and then you that could have paid. Money. You know what I mean? So, so you have to be proactive. You have to be, you have to uh, go get see? it. You yes. Go get it, bro. Go get it. You have to go get it. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about like your career in the finance industry for people that want to get into finance or have an interest in finance. Do you, do you agree that it's better? To, well, you said it before, but you think it, people should go into finance like to study it um, or people should just get their license? I believe everybody should study it. I believe it should be mandatory at least one or two years, probably in middle school and then again in high school, some class. I mean, we take econ and government. We take some poetry classes. We take uh, all different no, kinds of things. It should be at least two years in high school. Mm -hmm. It should right. be like your junior or senior year. All right. But even before that, like planning One in middle ahead, school, like planning ahead, the seed younger, like when, okay, he, he yeah, can In elementary school, they could do like little, like their math equations are about business. Right. Then in middle school, same shit. You know, they could just still teach them the pie fucking chart, but right. a couple little, like a semester is just there. It's about real life practical things about, oh, you just paid interest. And, you know, and emphasizing it too, because sometimes they emphasize just like the equation, but like emphasize, oh, read the fucking text. And, um, yeah, I think that would help a lot. Going through with that, they should do the hands-on application with kids. And then for us as adults, you should you should be reading something or learning something every day um, as far as if you're going to do it for like myself yeah definitely get a license going to school is cool but a lot of the professors don't have their own business in that field i figured out and i'm like i went to school to be architect this guy was not a professional architect he didn't have his own architect business and i'm like no um and just other things i'm like now i want to study and be with somebody who has their own practice and to have your own practice like a doctor you need a license um and everything, well, for the most part, you need a license to handle hazmats or license to handle this, you know, deal with OSHA's requirements for whatever field, being a contractor license. And so I would say, Brian, if you want to do finance professionally, get a license to learn the basics and to make sure you cover yourself and understand the fundamentals. And then from there, you can start figuring out like Dave Ramsey has a theory and somebody else has a theory and all these people have a theory, but you understand the fundamentals of how it all works together like cohesively so yeah what, getting what, a license what, what license would you get first or what do you mean by license like what specifically what would be the first mm -hmm. thing dude i like food i would say food handlers <laughs> 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 no nah, get your food handlers license work at pizza hut and then uh <laughs> study for your investments like now um i would say your insurance license Insurance is one of the worst financial products that is manipulated out there. It's the, it's the mafia, man, of what's today. So insurance rips families off. Like I was talking about, you had to pass away a certain way with accidental death and dismemberment. There's so many clauses. They won't cover 9-11. They won't cover like that Las Vegas shooting. Uh, they won't cover COVID. Insurance, man, people need to understand insurance. You know, my mom passed away, unfortunately, with no life insurance. And nobody even explained how that works. Nobody talked about it. And I would hope that more people talk about insurance because we don't want to see people doing car washes on the corners. We don't want to see GoFundMes. We don't want to see the look I had those in the stores and faces on posters. We don't want to see all that stuff. You know what I mean? So if people understood the insurance game, they could save so many families, millions of dollars wasted in insurance. Then once you save the family's money on insurance, they're going to trust you to do you want to do their investments, you want to do their mortgage, do both. 
So I'd, I'd probably do insurance. Now I'm just asking, you know, there's people, people in, interested in finance. You know what they say? There's no romance without finance, right? You need money. Money makes. Why is money important, Kyle? Like, and in, in what kind of like got you in, in, in the door with finance? Money is the greatest tool God has created to show how much value you brought to your community. Sharing the resources with like the people that mm -hmm. matter around you. Um, and like, we all want to do koshin, take care of our family and security. It's all about security. It comes down to security. I feel like money because it'll solve like 90% of your problems. People should try to get more money somehow. Yes. Yeah. I feel like people don't do enough. And then it's like, oh, but then I have to work extra hard to get it. But it's like, that's so the point. But, but what's the alternative? And then they're like watching this fucking series on Netflix. And they're, oh, they're watching yeah. their favorite sports team that takes away their attention. One thing is the money control, and that controls, like, that's a big piece of it. But there's another way to control us, and it's our attention. We have 16 hours in a day, you know, you sleep eight mm -hmm. hours, you work eight hours. But those eight hours, it's Netflix. If you're an NBA fan, 82 games out of the year, you're checking what the Lakers are playing. Are the You either watch a three-hour game, or you're watching a 20-minute highlight, yeah. or, or you're just checking your phone like, oh, shit, we won today. Oh, shit, what was the score? Okay, cool. Or you're on Twitter. All that screen time. Huh? Boom. And if you're a uh, baseball fan, 162 games out of the year, you're checking, did the Dodgers win today? Oh, shit, they, oh, we won today. Or you're watching th two hours of your time, and then... You want, you're an NBA fan and then a soccer fan and a football fan and a soccer fan and UFC matches and mm -hmm. every Netflix show you like, Game of Thrones, fucking Mad Men, whatever it is, movies. Like we're literally giving all our hours to these entertainment entities or yeah. sports entities because they're all businesses. FIFA is like, the that's probably one of the biggest businesses in the world, like top 10. Mm -hmm. They fucking have so much control. Like corruption. countries. Countries beg them for their to take their product to their country. Like countries are like committing fraud for just begging people to come host a host an event in our fucking country, please. Like yeah. that, that business is crazy. But um but it's attention. So we're giving away our attention when we could using that attention to maybe learn a new skill, get a license in those eight hours. Sure. Maybe work Pick up something like a camera, try to take pictures, make a little extra side mm -hmm. income. I don't know. There's all kinds of ways. Gary V talks about going garage selling and reselling stuff on eBay mm -hmm. and let go on Facebook. I actually used to do that a little bit with uh, Funko Pops. I used to buy like the Funko Pop collectibles. Yeah. And I would get the That's rare ones, up. the chases and shit, and I would sell them online and shit. See? Making money. So going back with, with money, I believe it's the greatest tool as far as you provide solutions to the people who have problems. And that should be the only way you receive. Somebody has a problem, you provide a solution, they give you money. Now, people who have a lot of money, they solved a lot of problems. So for instance, Bill Gates, a lot of money. Elon Musk, a lot of money. People had issues when it comes to electric vehicles, issues when it came to computers. Now you could print something on the computer, you could do things on the computer because Bill Gates solved a problem. So is he mad? Am I mad that he might get a couple thousand dollars every time that laptop turns on? No, because I have a problem today. I need to print out this PDF file or I need to do this. I need to send this my client and I need to do this. Do I want to do it by hand? Do I want to write it out all this form and make? No, I'm going to use a computer. So now he has a lot of money. So a lot of people who have money, they solve a lot of problems. Yeah, the big. Well, right now we had Mark Zuckerberg. He released threads. Which was the comparison yep. to Twitter? Yep, they had release, huh? thirty million downloads on day one. Thirty million Crazy. downloads, and then he's like, "Wow, what a successful day one!" My goal is to be the first open platform that has one billion user users. He already has a billion or more than I don't know how many billion Facebook has like active monthly users, and Instagram has over a billion, but that hey. Twitter's only like a four or five hundred thousand, five hundred million of users. They don't really? Have, they only have like 500. So they tr Twitter has never made it to a billion, and Facebook wants to be the first one, or Meta. So Threads is part of Meta? Yeah. So Threads, it's it's <clears throat> it's connected to your Instagram. So once you, if you're on Instagram, you have the link to take you to Threads, and you could hear, you could just be tweeting, kind of tweeting, but threading, bro. Threading, threading bro. Threading. 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 <clears throat> 
So it's kind of cool right now. There's no ads on it because it's brand new. So they're uh, just, they're just, they got to collect data, you know, for before the ads come in. And, <laughs> and then... Um, not before the monetary. Threads is cool, though. It's 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 like new audience because like sometimes I have people that follow me on Twitter that don't follow me on Instagram. So it's like two different audiences using that kind of same format. I was wondering, I was like, it seems like a new Twitter. Yeah, it's, no, well, they're getting sued today. <laughs> so this morning, uh, Twitter suing Facebook yeah. because they're saying that they copied the, 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 format. I, the IP, whatever. Like, it's like, it's it's way too similar than from their own shit. So yeah. This morning, Twitter fucking went after them. <clears throat> yeah, you don't pay what, billions of dollars for that and then have somebody come just knock. I mean, he did open source it, didn't he? Like the algorithms, Elon Musk, a couple weeks ago. All that stuff, he said, here. Check it out. That's crazy. Do you use uh, Twitter? I use Twitter. But Twitter I use more to expose a lot of truth that is not related to finances. (laughs) What does that mean? (laughs) So a lot like the 9-11 stuff, um, stuff with like the uh, Hollywood, the elites, um, Washington, D.C. Yeah, I expose a lot of the adrenochrome we were talking about those theories are crazy too bro dude what's like a conspiracy theory behind hollywood because i i've seen some so i just want to see what you a couple was with the the pedophilia and things like that the hollywood the elites a lot of actors that i just got so sad when i found out certain things they're tied to that and then when it comes to trafficking with the kids i'm so proud of the new movie sound of freedom amazing movie just came out the the real life video shots at the end was like actual footage and it's so sad to see like but the movie it's great ending everything is beautiful um tied to a lot with that and a lot of it's done in help like oh there is an earthquake in haiti let's send a certain foundation that shall not be named down there and let's help all these kids and then oh some kids need to be adopted but then hundreds go missing things like that and it just seems when there's a crisis never let a crisis go to waste it's like okay we're gonna have a lot of hollywood and actors come and like bring awareness but then behind the scenes things aren't always what they seem and they can kind of no they kind of they get away with certain activities as we already seen lately with the irs and the doj with biden they admitted they got away with certain things that americans every day like you and i we don't get away with yeah so, we were gonna find the prison yeah and- little wayne kodak black they went to jail like yeah so it's it's a twisted little web and unfortunately you hear people trying to say the truth like joan rivers uh michael jackson uh certain other people and then things happen to them so yeah just sucks and so hollywood is just like a big propaganda machine that's they use that just to yeah. push their it's certain- a big club yep and it, it, it all started way back with like back in the day with the Disney uh, Mickey Mouse Club and a lot of actors that probably we, you and I recognize if people go back and look like where it all started and things like that. It's it's it sucks, man. But it's that's the Hollywood scene. And I'm, I'm glad it's being exposed. Like the latest actor who came out and exposed all that. Well, a couple actors lately. So, well, there's a, a big shift, bro. People aren't going to the movies anymore. Indiana Jones is said yeah. to lose like six hundred million dollars. Dang! So they had it had a three hundred million dollar budget, and usually the marketing budget is double. So it's another three hundred million plus, like the movie theater takes half of the cut, so they take fifty percent. So movie theater will take fifty percent of the ticket the gate, sales. Yeah. So that I think they said he they need to make nine hundred million to start making a profit. It's almost just break even, and they're not even projected to make three hundred million. Like they're gonna lose, like six hundred million, and you know that's because people don't want to see, people don't go to movies unless it's like something that's actually good or something that's actually cool, something that's unique or original. Mm-hmm. But they're trying to. It's Indiana Jones five with like eighty year old fucking Harrison Ford. Eighty bro. years old. Like you know, it's just like no one wants to see that. Where all the CGI, all the everything. CGI, everything already looks kind of too fake. All the Marvel movies are kind of losing yeah. their thunder because it's just the same. Story. So, what do you think? Uh, little, what do you think is the next step with like movies? You think like holograms or like live or what do you think the VR scene? Like in the there's a lot of money movies? in VRs. 
so like, with like the headsets and stuff Oh yeah, well the Apple goggles are gonna be insane. Thirty five hundred bucks. Thirty five hundred bucks, but like that's Crazy. that has like the same chip as like one of those computers right now. That's mm-hmm. that we're running the editing. But software. that's the pro though. When they come out with the pro version, they most likely they're coming out with the basic one. So I'm sure the Apple Pro is like thirty four ninety nine. They'll probably do a basic for like twenty nine or something. No, but it also yeah they're gonna make us a, a more accessible one yeah. with less features, less cool like facial recognition software. So what's cool about that, it's um it's the beginning of the future. It's gonna be I saw there was a Steve Jobs interview and he said first is the computers, then it's the computers on your phone, and then this computer that you wear in your face. There's gonna be some kind of glasses and you'll be able to send messages and talk to your friends and family all over the world. So that's the next iteration. You won't need a phone, you just put the shit on, you're fucking it's like playing Pokemon Go where you, it's a real world, but then you see the thing, you know? And, uh-huh. then, you, and then the message thing yeah. where, like, if you go like that, like, you could pop up screens like you're Jarvis and Iron Man. Like, yes. Pulling up, like, oh, you're watching a video here. You don't need to have 10 monitors. If you're a day trader, you can literally put on those goggles and you have all your, your, your data set points, candlesticks, got. like, just watching oh others. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's going to be super cool. I don't know if, like, that first version is going to be that cool. Maybe... Because think about iPhone in 2009 versus oh, an iPhone yeah. now. It's just like so much. Everything's the pictures are so badass yeah. now. The cameras are getting crazier. And um, the seventh or eighth version of these goggles, like in five, six, seven years, it's going to be fucking badass. Yeah. I like it. I like, I like innovation. Some people are scared, like, oh, shit, they're trying to control us even more. They want to keep us inside the house, this and that, whatever. But I don't know. I like. Sometimes I feel like these products, it's just like we, there's no stopping it. Like, might as well try to see yeah. how they can use it for your benefit. Well, right? even then, bro, like even without computers, like technologies, it causes a lot of disruption in different markets, right? So without a computer, there would be no remote work. There wouldn't be editors or VAs or all these, you know, different market jobs, right? That would be created. There would be no content creators like Think about it like that, like all these different platforms wouldn't be created without computers, without, um, you know, influencers wouldn't even be a thing. Like yeah, the, the possibility of, of people making money like with their, in image. An, in, in, it, with their image wouldn't be a possibility without like the innovation of an iPhone or, you know, the mm-hmm. Internet or YouTube or. Yeah, whatever. it'll be it'll be jobs that we never imagined, you know. Yeah, there I see the financial aspect when they started selling tickets on VR to live games, I'm like, you could sell unlimited front row tickets. Oh my God, I know, bro, the NBA games. Everybody's gonna be Jack Nicholas right there on the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> it was a- <laughs> and imagine with those sick, badass yeah, glasses, just dude. like, you're in the fucking, you're in this fucking trenches, bro. And you're right there, like you just, all right. And ten, then they said- 10 bucks, They also the said like, it's a, it's a new way, so, because everyone's wearing these things, you could pick like your avatar's clothing and make them circular, uh, look a certain way. Ready kind Player like, One. That's, well, the same shit we do. Like when you play video games, mm-hmm. you know, you play Call of Duty. You, you try, buy the best skins yep. for your gun. Um, Ready Player One is like you're buying outfits. Oh shit, that exclusive, which is an NFT. So mm-hmm. NFTs are gonna be useful. Yes. It was just too early, and people got greedy and scamming and shit. Yeah. But um, yeah. it's gonna be like that. An NFT. There's only a thousand of these Gucci fucking NFTs. You put on the goggles and then your character's wearing that shit. Like, oh, yep. look, I'm wearing a fucking. And it's verified. Like, damn. Oh, verified shit. red bottoms. Oh, man. that's what I'm saying. Like, that's going to be, it's going to be cool. Like, it's, but it's more consumerism. It's like, oh, these companies are going to yeah. make a shit load of money exploiting our weaknesses. This dude was interviewing, or, or Gary Vee was interviewing this dude at a Germany conference. And this guy was saying um, that they run tests with people. So, like, they would get 100 people in, like, a, a central city. 100 volunteers they pay them like 100 bucks and they would have put on like uh, all these sensors on their brain and scanning their eyes and they never have to pick up a phone and they would show them advertisements so they're they would analyze like oh um asian men 18 to 35 when we put them to the test you know the they reacted oh, more dang. to these kind of advertisements like there is that's the type of control that they have yes in those fucking the companies. targeting market bro like and he's like oh yeah now we're using artificial intelligence to make the process faster so if they know what a 18 to 25 mexican kid is my most likely buy mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. this kind of thing. They have the data that proves like, oh yeah, they, they react good to these kind of ads. Or Absolutely. I believe that's what Tesla is doing with allowing other electric vehicles. I believe they allowed Ford and then I think it was GM. Uh, Tesla allowed them to use their charging stations. And I believe that's a data play in order to download all their data and see, all right, these four drivers, where are they going? That's a different market. Where are these other GM drivers going? Where are they shopping? at? And then ta- Tesla is able to download that data and then do whatever they want. Damn, that's Target crazy. Marketing. Yeah, they're just, we're just getting to that. Uh, it's already kind of at that point, but it's just going to be where... Are we really making our own decisions? Even right now, are we making our decisions? Like, why are you wearing uh-huh. that shirt and that watch? Right. Why am I wearing this watch? Why am I wearing... Uh-huh. Why do I have this specific microphone? You know, like, this specific microphone, I got it because Joe Rogan uses this microphone. I'm like, you know, the goat. Go. And then, why did Joe Rogan use this? Because his audio engineer saw the brand and he recognized that brand and he did some tests and... He chose this brand because it's probably one that sounds just as good, but it's another brand. But he chose this because they did some advertisement. And that advertisement, you know, came from an advertising company, a parent mm-hmm. company that developed those fucking microphones. It's like, it just keeps going up the ladder. You know? and Inception. Then, and then that fucking, that company needs finances for their business. And then those banks that we were talking about earlier are financing them. And their, their company is affected by interest rates and just go down the fucking <laughs> rabbit hole. Yes. Damn, I'm starting it, to learn some shit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy when it, like, when I found out what they did to GameStop and AMC a couple years ago, that's when I went public a lot with my, my YouTube channel. And I started just telling people, like, hey, like, I'm going to tell you publicly this is what's going on. And I would expose what they were doing at the moment. And I was like, I can't do this consciously because it's messed up what they're doing. What do you mean what they're doing with the GameStop and the AMC? So do you remember what happened with GameStop to the AMC? All that everybody remembers, right? Um, And so what they did is they stopped people selling it and people buying certain. uh, Oh, they halted the market, right? Yes, yes. They halted the market with Citadel and Robinhood and things like that, and they're still going through certain things. Some things were settled, some things were um, dismissed, and in a nutshell, you could see the institutions being market makers and trying to lower the price because they were losing billions of dollars, billions. Because basically what happened, a bunch of smart guys, a bunch of nerds online got together and they read these financial reports and said, these banks are short GMC or uh, yeah, GameStop and AMC. Short means that they think that the the companies are going to do bad. Okay. They think they're going to tank. And so when all these nerds found out that the banks are basically betting against GameStop because during COVID, who's going to go buy a video game at a at a store you're not you're gonna buy it on playstation store xbox live whatever you buy it nobody's gonna go to gamestop yeah so the people that are licensed you know in my area and field they would all gather around like hey guys where should we invest oh we should not invest in the gamestop or we should invest that gamestop's gonna suck that's what these uh institutions did but the nerds found out what they did and they said why don't we make the price go up how do we make the price go up? Everybody starts buying it. We all start buying it. Bada boom. They got a, a effort together. Everybody basically got the price to go up and it kept going up and they kept buying. Boom. And the price kept increasing and increasing. And every time the price increased, all these investors lost billions of dollars because they kept betting that the price was going to go down and the price kept going up. Long story short, it was manipulated in a n- different kind of way that, that yeah. they don't like it's not they're yeah. not the ones doing it like the people somehow find a, a loophole to fucking mm-hmm. take it out yes and then they shut it down yeah and basically um they got rid of their positions basically they were like 130 over uh short and now an average is maybe like 40 to 60. like they they had way too many short positions on it it was just, i don't get into the specifics but yeah it was just stupid investments by these banks and well not banks but investment firms hedge funds and I don't say they got away with something, but somehow people were not able to sell the stock and the price was halted. And that really frustrated me. And that kept me like, I got to tell people what's going on. Yeah. So. It's just, that's fucked up. Like, mm-hmm. and what's your opinion on like cryptocurrency? Oh, I love it. Certain types um, will not survive this recession, which you've already seen with NFTs and cryptos. A lot of them have already gone down. Famous ones, even uh, like Cardano, um, Solana, I believe they still have an application and there's a few more. However, mine is, uh, 
So I have to disclose this is not a offer to buy or sell a cryptocurrency. <laughs> this is not a recommendation to buy or sell a cryptocurrency. Uh, make sure you meet your own investment suitability objectives. Now, it's not financial advice. Nope, education only. So that being said, um, XRP is very fast in cross-border payments, and it's the way to transfer money in the modern era verified right now. Well, in relatively uh, less than a minute. And so to give you an example of this, let's say you and I were going down to Argentina, okay? And they have like pesos in Argentina. We go down there, we spend all of our money. We're like, hey, dang, we, we lost some money. Hey, yo, Brian, we need some money. We need some, some pesos down here, okay? We don't have a bank down there. There's no way of getting currency or anything like that. But we have internet. All we need is internet, okay? Brian logs in online and he's going to send, let's say, $200 US and he's going to transfer it online and you could use whatever server you want and that's with all these cryptos it could be dogecoin it could be bitcoin ethereum whatever i'm just call it like a server for now okay you could use whatever server you want upload it to there this server is going to make their own coin right and then they transfers to us we we log into that server on the internet poop i'm logged in so he upload 200 million or 200 us dollars it goes to the server comes to me and I take it out, okay, boom, I wanna take it out as pesos. Let's take it out as pesos. Now I have 200 pesos or whatever, the equivalent of 200 pesos yeah. on my phone. Now I could use it. I just got instant transfer of value within a minute. And then like the fees are super, super, super cheap, super, super, super cheap. simple. That is a modern day Western Union. Back in the day, our parents would be like, hey, you're down stuck over there. I'll send a Western Union telegram. You go to Western Union with $500 cash, you give it to them. They're like coordinated with each other, like through Telegram, beep, 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 whatever back in the day. And they say, okay, here, boom, let's do this. Hey, give them the money because it's verified that we have it over here in house. But that time takes a long time to yeah. verify. Crypto months also. Yeah. Cryptocurrency verified right away. And we have our, okay, perfect. And the pace of verification is very useful. People, do I have my money? Do I have my hundred billion dollars right now or am I going to wait three days for my hundred billion? Because I got moves to make. I got things to buy. Things are being sold. Make sense? Yeah. Like just imagine, yeah, there's no way. Yeah. And I, for me, um, most of the coins is mostly Ethereum and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Just playing it safe. Um, I used to, I had a lot of, I made some good money back in the 2021 time. So... That was the last halving. All of the coins mm -hmm. pumped, Bitcoin pumped, everything went crazy, which happened, you know, four years before the last halving in 2017. So now we're cl getting closer to the next halving. Yes, and uh, for those that don't know, halving is like the Bitcoin rewards get cut in place for miners. Mm -hmm. And miners are the ones that are tapping into the server with all the computers and the computing power in order to solve problems in blockchain, which with that, they get rewarded based on like, you know, how much input did you put into mm -hmm. solving this problem? So every four years since Bitcoin was invented, it's been cutting in half. So that means it takes a lot more energy for you to get some rewards mm -hmm. and makes the coin more um, scarce. scarce. So I love the system of Bitcoin. It's just going to keep cutting in yes. half every four years. You can't make more than 100 million. And I love it. it I think it's such a smart way. Yeah, um, I think it's 20 million, I think, was a total Bitcoin allowance. I think it's 20 or 21 million. I'm not sure. 21 million. Yeah. yeah. Um, and but Bitcoin, it's not going to be every day because the speed is too slow. Let's say for Starbucks right now. Like, we want to do a Starbucks. I'm not going to pay in Bitcoin because if everybody's, let's say there's, you know, 100 million people in the U.S. are paying with Starbucks right now. It's the, the servers, it's the speeds, Ethereum. It couldn't happen right now. Couldn't happen. That's where other uh, border payments, um, XRP and then uh, Stellar, I think it's XLM, and other cryptos, uh, VeChain, which is, I believe, very energy efficient because people like green energy. They don't want all these mining systems or whatever. It's, you know, it wastes a lot of energy, blah, 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 with computers. They want an alternative type of coin that doesn't use all that energy, things like that. So there's a few out there that are going to do very well. But a lot of them are just like, we've already seen them like, nah, you're, it's just a scam, just a rug pull. Somebody made you come and step right here, say, step on up, give me five bucks. I promise this coin's going to the moon. Next thing you know, you turned around, they pull the rug, they're gone. Peace, you know, and you're on your butt just looking dumb.
Yeah, so. there's a lot of scams, bro. The NFTs was the next thing. But, yeah, yeah it's just um, there's ways to combat the systems by these systems that other people are creating, you know, something that's modern. I like even the big corporate, big countries are trying to fight the system that's already in place with the bricks. Yeah. I think that's that's good, bro, because we can't just be all controlled by the same people. Not You want to be sovereign. And that's what all these countries are saying is sovereign is allow me to be have my freedom and my freedom of liberty and my freedom to breathe. And I don't want you to control my freedom of breath by controlling my food supply, by controlling my money and how much money I have and where I can go and what I could do. Like I said, with that uh, social score, I can't go get in certain things because I'm I believe this way politically or uh, religiously, you're going to, you know, instead of a credit score, now I can't buy certain things. Cause my well, social how score, would, uh, you said it was like credit, but like, what would be the benefits of having a high credit, a uh, high social score? Oh, now you can go to all these certain galas. You can go to the Super Bowl. You can go to all these certain events because you're verified that, oh, you fit our club of you're socially acceptable. You That's don't, crazy. You you don't talk about the vaccine. You don't talk bad about uh, any uh, Democrat. You don't talk bad about whatever it is. So yeah, you you can step on in. You you you're a nice sheep. You come on in this. You're good, good guy. You you're go to sheep. you you deserve to go to this school. This is a socially credit score school. With this school, we're gonna teach you. Oh, you you're not qualified. Okay, no, we're gonna go over this social school. You need a little bit more ethics training. Let's put you in this school for some ethics diversion classes. Damn, that's some big brother type shit. It's yeah. It's already it's, happened. It's it sucks. You know? So for you, um what is the meaning of like happiness or life? Like how do you like what should someone strive to to be or to do because or what can you do when then all these institutions are there to try to control you, like in your, you know. I believe, well, I, I trust God, number one. So I believe that you should trust God and why he placed you here on earth. This is coming from a former atheist and things like that. And that. What do you mean former atheist? So I didn't believe in a God at all. But why? Oh, so I grew happened? up not believing in God. So well, I read the Bible and then I started believing and started just like, that was it. Just read the book and like, dude, this is amazing. And then started studying with my rabbi and just just hours and hours, days with my rabbi. It was just like very eye-opening. How nobody talks about how amazing Jesus as a person was. Forget whether he's religious or not. Just he was a real human being. The first thing, he was human for real. That verified history. Nobody talks about the morals. that. So we talk about um, like um, Martin Luther King. We'll talk about Mother Teresa. We'll talk about uh, Gandhi. We'll talk about these figures, Aristotle, who they said good things and they were good people. What about Jesus? Like, why don't we mention the good things? He's, what about the Proverbs? Like, those are good Proverbs. Why don't we talk about those Proverbs? Oh, no, it's it's in the Bible. We shouldn't talk about, like, it's oh, a good story. Oh, I never thought of it like It's that. a good that story. It's it's a good, it says he, it's an ethical story that you don't even have to say it has Bibles. You know what I mean? And so the fact that it was never told, I didn't know about, uh, like, Noah's Ark. I didn't know none of anything at all like all that was just like oh it's it's a bible it's a book but then i started seeing okay one i read jesus this guy is a nice guy i would want my p i would want to hang out with this guy he's a cool dude and then okay is he real he was a real guy okay did he do all these miracles i don't know some people said he there's a lot of proof that he did miracles okay but i already believed in god before that my thing was this is what it was a question when i was uh atheist is do you believe that your eyeball was designed or was it just enhanced that way over millions and millions of years, if you believe millions of years too? And did it like evolve from a puddle to have this distinct eyeball design? And you, you're familiar with the retina and how everything switched mm -hmm. and how we, you, right? I was like, yeah, it's probably designed. Well, then there's a designer. That's God. But why a, why a designer? What, what? Do you, what do you call God? Creator of the universe? Designer of the universe? I feel like there is something. There has to be something. So then, okay, perfect. Perfect. So then I transitioned, right? That's why I said from uh, atheist to agnostic. Agnostic means there's something. Yeah. There has to be something. I'm not going to say it's God. I'm not going to say it's Jesus and all that yet. 
I was, I was still very hard hit and yeah. And I'll never forget this time in my life. So it was amazing, dude, the whole transition. And then I started being hungry. I'm like, okay, so if there is a designer and if we didn't evolve from like a puddle and all this stuff, I'm like, okay, what is it? And then I just started reading and reading. I'm like, dude, then one thing that blew me away was how the Bible is designed showed me there's a designer outside of time and just origin. It's ridiculous. Mathematically, it is impossible to write the Bible in the original, like the beginning, like Genesis, in a poetic format, the way that it's written. If I was to give you, you know what like haikus are, right? Yeah. Certain poems and you have to, you know, every certain letter has to go like this. The way that it's designed, it's it just blows my mind how impeccable it's put together. And I started doing all this, like, this book is crazy. How could it be like this? I'm, I'm going at it, like, trying to, like, no, this can't be real. Like, hard, like, no, they're wrong. Christians are wrong or, you know, Catholics are wrong and all this. No, blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, dude. And after so much, I was like, well, Jesus is real. And then I just felt it. Then there's just a sense that comes up. Well, I already felt it before that, but I never wanted to acknowledge that was the spirit, you know, of God and of, like, man, no. And this can't be right. No, they, I can't be real. And I just kept going on and on. And my rabbi, and it was just, you just know that you know that you know. And nothing ever can take that voice away of God telling you, son, you thought you wanted a career, but you really needed a calling. And here I am telling you what's up. This is what you're put on earth for. And to me, it was to tell people the truth. God has blessed me with an ability to teach and educate. And the, the scriptures say some people are having a, a gift of healing. Some people have a gift of prophecy. Some people have the gift of speech different gifts. And I believe mine is to educate people. And I'm able to read, comprehend, and put puzzles together and then explain it in a way that many can understand. So when it comes to exposing truth and things like that, that's what I use my channel for. And that's what it started when it came to the whole GameStop and the AMC. It's like, dude, this sucks. And nobody, nobody in my profession is saying anything. Yeah, it just... Yeah. There has to be truth or you know whatever the closest thing to truth is you know because we don't know the truth like i was always saying to going back to media like if whatever happening in japan something happens in japan how the fuck do you know you are you talking to someone directly there mm -hmm. or are you getting it what where do you hear it from you heard it on a, someone made an article about it someone made a video about it someone said it on the news did a politician say something it's just like and then what's, you know, what's their agenda behind how they want to deliver that information? Whether they're reporting on it, there's like a certain wording. And mm -hmm. and yeah, we need more people explaining and helping that. So make sure you guys follow this channel. Like, I'm definitely going to be watching all your videos for sure. Oh, and I want to I wanna keep talking, but I don't want to be here for the next five hours. But like, I want to do this again, bro. Yeah. And thank you well, for coming on the well, podcast. I'm grateful. Bro. Thank you for having me on. I love talking about this stuff. Yeah, me too. We and I never, get to, I never get to talk to anybody. So I was like, oh, shit, I got you. Yeah, that's what I'm here for, bro. All right. Thank you, Brian. <sighs> Thank you, Kyle. Later.